Hey everyone, thanks for joining the live stream tonight. Tonight we're going to go through a list of kitchen design mistakes that are commonly made. And if you're catching the replay of this video, I've added some chapters in the video description below to help, help you navigate through this kind of longer form content. And as we go through this list, it'll be a little easier for you to uh, navigate uh, those, um, those design mistakes. Now, last week we went through 37 kitchen design mistakes from an article I found on loveproperty.com. And tonight we're going to go through the rest of them, 13 more. I haven't looked at them yet. I've left them. Uh, I didn't read the article. I just left it where it was. We're going to go through these together. And since there's so few of them tonight, we'll easily get through them, have lots of time to chat with each other uh, as the night goes on. So please, if you're watching this live, say hello in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from. And uh, maybe you have a, a question or anything like that you want to you want to put in there. I'd love to try to answer those. And as we go, we'll answer as many of those as possible. But tonight we're talking about 50, well, actually 13 design mistakes that you can make in your next kitchen renovation. And, um, you know, you don't want to make any mistakes. We all make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. And a lot of these in the article are fairly, you know, common or even like not rocket science, like you probably heard of most of these mistakes before, but it's interesting just to talk about them and see maybe like, yeah, I made that one. Yeah, I made that one. Yeah, I did that one. And uh, you know, some things you want to look out for. So as we go on, we'll uh, we'll keep talking about these and we'll get into the article here in a second. I see some people coming on from all over the place. I just want to say hi and um, <laughs> hi, to, hi to Jack, Jack Penta in, just outside of Boston. Cool. Thanks for showing up to the live stream. Aaron, always good to have you on from Oregon. And Jeff, Jeff, yes, I seen that weird grill thing. Oh, well, I don't know if it's weird or not. It's for the HEPA filter. All right, cool. The chrome knob is, uh, oh, okay, neat. Well, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, Jeff, uh, Jeff sent me some photos of uh, some, some things in his kitchen. It was pretty cool. So appreciate you doing that, Jeff. So let's jump into this article and see what's going on here. And um, we, will, we, will, uh, we will get right into this. Oh, yeah, before we get too far on, I don't know if you did today's Wordle, but I did it in five tries. So not my best performance, but uh, not bad. Let me know if you play Wordle. I haven't seen any kitchen-related words in there yet, but uh, you never know what comes up. Every day is a different one. All right, the next one, or the next one on our list, these are the, the, the last 13 on the list we didn't get to last week because I was losing my voice. It was getting kind of tiring uh, going through them all, but we're going to go through this one here and uh, we'll keep going as we, as we go here. So let me just get on my screen. And uh, as we go through, I'll try to try to be a little more active in the comments tonight than I was uh, last week. And uh, yeah, so keep saying hi and let me know where you're, where you're watching from. All right, here we go. Buying, uh, buying without trying. So this is the, one of the mistakes that you don't want to make. Requesting samples is an absolute must before you order anything, particularly if you are shopping online. Seeing samples in stores helps, but ideally you want to see your chosen finishes in situ as colors and even textures can appear quite different depending on the surrounding hues and lighting. Yes, very common thing uh, to do is to take your samples, even if you're in a showroom somewhere, even take them outside into natural light to have a look at them to see what they look like. We used to do this all the time with, with everything. I tell clients, just take that outside, look at it in the parking lot, or take it home, look at it in your lighting, because things look different in different lightings. And especially in stores with the fluorescent lights, and depending on the type of store that you're in, it can be a little bit different. So whether you're doing paint colors or whether you're doing flooring or if you're doing countertops or even cabinet doors, take them home, take them, have a look at them in your space and it'll be, you know, at least you can see exactly what they look like in, in your environment. So that's a mistake not to uh, get some samples. And I guess, yeah, if you're ordering stuff online, you want to be able to, to see the things. You, you don't know what they're really going to look like. Looking at something on a screen and looking at it in real life is two different things, depending on the type of screen you're looking at and the resolution and the, the, the way it changes colors. So you want to make sure you do absolutely get samples that you can take home, look at. And I know when we were doing this house, you know, we, we, we ordered flooring. The flooring came like bundles of flooring. And we were like, this isn't the flooring. We don't we don't we don't want to we don't want this flooring. So all that flooring had to go back and we got all new flooring. And, you know, the way we went, we laid that flooring. It was great. So. Make sure you get samples and you don't, you know, miss out on on something that, you know, that could be a big mistake. So, hey, everyone who's watching, we got Lori from 
Uh, I don't know where you're at from, Lori. <laughs> but you're on, so that's all that matters. So thank you. Hey, we'll catch the replay. Thanks, Darlene, for showing up. I'm just saying hi, and uh, no problem. We all have lives that we live outside of whatever we're doing. So, And Rose, you're, you're here from East Tennessee. Awesome. So nice to have you on again, Rose, tonight. Hey, Barbara, good evening from Rochester. Cool. Um, yeah, and, and Barbara, thank you for the, the picture I did. I, I'd seen that now that we were, you, you mentioned that. Barbara sent me a picture of um, an undermount sink in laminate. And it looks quite nice and uh, interesting. So uh, maybe I'll try to find that while we're on here live later and, and, and show everyone. Uh, Kelly's on from Cleveland. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for being on tonight. So a lot of people coming on. That's awesome. And again, just uh, keep saying hi in the comments and we'll we'll chat it up later as we go. And let's bring this back up here tonight. Um, let's go on to the next one. So buying without trying. All right. Leaving the appliances till last. I talk about this one a lot. Um on, on numerous videos, it's important that you know what your appliances are going to be. And especially if you have built-ins like this oven and, um, and anything that needs a cutout, like a, a cooktop, stuff like that. So really important. Choosing home appliances may not be the most exciting part of designing a new kitchen. I don't know. I, I kind of disagree. I think appliance shopping is quite exciting, actually. But anyway, but it's a good idea to do this before you even start looking at units. This will or it will allow you to fit your units around your appliances okay, before you buy cabinets, uh, rather than the other way around, giving you seamless look like this that's smart as well as space efficient. Yeah, it's important that you know the size of appliances and the particular appliances that you're going to get. And as last week we mentioned, because I think they mentioned this in a previous um part of their list about appliances and Sanjiv was on and he said, um, just go right to the manufacturer's websites and they'll give you all the proper cutout dimensions that you need for those appliances. And if you're working with a designer, um, they will probably ask you for that and they'll go do that and, and figure that out. But that's important. And if you're doing this yourself, you maybe you're doing your own kitchen renovation, make sure you get those appliance sizes. That's absolutely vital. And, um, even even ranges and dishwashers, which are fairly run of the mill as far as the sizes, they're fairly standard. You know, there's different sizes, but normally overall, the majority of those are, are pretty normal. But measure those two just to make sure that it's, you know, it is exactly what it's supposed to be. So. All right, uh, let's go on to the next one here. Hold on. I see a comment here. Lori says, would love to see the undermount sink in laminate was thinking uh, I would be able to do that. I'll find it in a few minutes. We will look at that for sure because it did, it looked pretty cool. Barb, you okay with that? Let me know, actually. Let me ask Barbara first before I go showing you pictures that she sent me. Barbara, give me the thumbs up if I can show you that picture. And if not, that's totally cool. Um, nobody will. It, it'd be fine either way. So um, if that's good, that, then let me know. All right. Let's go on to the next one. How do we get there? There we go. All right. I'm all confused. i got a different setup tonight. Playing it too safe. <laughs> What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What? I don't know what they mean. All right. That's a little bland. I get, I know that's a little bit bland, but anyway, Barbara says it's okay. Perfect. Thanks, Barb. I'll do that in a minute. The kitchen is first and foremost, a practical space, but that doesn't mean you have to forget about style. Uh, while white units and walls are easy to live with, they can feel a bit flat and clinical. There's that clinical word again. Well, this does look clinical, actually. Especially when combined with stainless steel appliances, jazz them up <laughs> with a statement backsplash, eye-catching handles, and a patterned tile floor. Get some jazz in there and fix up that kitchen. That is a very uh, white, white space. What would make it a little better would be if it was maybe just a more profile door, shaker style or even a raised panel door. Um, I like the all white, but I, I will concede that this does look a little bland. And uh, so that, that's, that is what it is. So yeah, um, don't play it too safe. Or play it safe if you like this look, then go for it. But um, in other words, you know, do what you want to do. Add, a, add some jazz to that or some country or some some pop music, whatever. It doesn't even matter. All right, let's go to the next one. Hold on. Let me let me get out of here. 
All right, some comments are coming in, so that's always good. And uh, you want to you want a link? What are we looking at today? Link would help. I can I can put a link in the description of the video and the replay. It's the it's the thirteen design mistakes that we didn't get to in last week's video. We're going to go through them tonight. And since we don't have as many, we can chat a little bit more um, in the comments. So that's all good. Patty made it from the Twin Cities. Very cool. Awesome. Hello from Georgia. Hello from Cleveland. Um, oh, it's, it's uh, nice. All right. Patty says not even some nice hardware or a couple of lights over the sink. Yeah, that's I agree. That one's a little bland, a little bland. But, uh, you know. Somebody likes it. It's uh, it's somebody's kitchen. So, you know, you got that cutting board there. That's a different color. And yeah, no, it's all good. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, you didn't see that cutting board. Look at the cutting board. See, that's a different color. All right, going overboard with open shelving. Ooh, there's a hot button. Hey, Alan's on. Hi, Alan. We'll get an update from Alan in a few minutes. Going overboard. Probably Photoshop. Do you think? Let me go back. Hmm, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to tell anyway. I'm definitely not a pro. It's probably a white cutting board. A little splash. That's the jazz they're talking about right there. All right, going overboard with open shelving. Well, I know, I know for I know for sure that there's a lot of people out there in the internet kitchen world that love open shelving, and a lot of people out there that hate open shelving. And there you go. This is really just, I, don't, I wouldn't even consider this open shelving. It's shelving, but it's not, not like we're used to seeing. So don't, don't go overboard. Open shelving can look stunning in a kitchen, especially if you have impressive crockery to display. I don't, but leave everything out in the open, but, but leave everything out in the open and the space can quickly feel chaotic and cluttered. Plus your kitchenware will easily gather dust. Yes, spiders and other things that you don't want in your dishes include a mixture of open and closed storage so you can stow less attractive appliances and utensils neatly out of sight leaving only the best on show and i guess the issue is we look at pictures we see the open shelving we see it on instagram or pinterest or the internet or magazine or someone's home or house or whatever and it looks fabulous it looks fantastic it's all staged it's all beautiful and we don't think through the process or we don't think further down the road of how it's going to look in my home and how i'm going to be able to take care of that and maybe that situation does fit me in my life and my habits in the kitchen or maybe it won't and sometimes what happens is we see those things, not just for open shelving, but for lots of things, not even in the kitchen, but anywhere in, in the home. And we go for it, not realizing it doesn't really fit, you know, us. And that doesn't mean we shouldn't get it or shouldn't try it or can't learn to live with it or like it. But sometimes that's what happens. And you end up with a cluttered mess that you don't like and you end up having to do something else to fix it. So don't go overboard on the open shelving, which you'd think, well, that's fairly obvious. I'm not going to go overboard with this kind of thing. But... Maybe you would because you've seen it in a picture and you really like the look of that kitchen and that's what you want. And you don't know, you never had an open shelving. And, you know, honestly, if you've never had it, you don't really think through the dust in the grease situation. You, you know, a lot of people don't. They just go with it because it looks nice. So, but don't go overboard. You know, that's too much jazz, I guess, is what we can say. Too much jazz and uh, we don't want that. All right, next one, neglecting. The plumbing. Well, I don't know if it's a mistake. I don't think you're going to neglect the plumbing uh, in a kitchen design. Maybe. I guess you're going to neglect the fact that you're not going to do it, do it neatly or correctly. When planning a kitchen, it's best to start with the practicalities and build your design around what's possible rather than what's aesthetically ideal. Moving plumbing can be tricky and expensive, so check with a plumber before rearranging the position of your sink, dishwasher, or washing machine. You may have to rethink your dream, uh, your dream design a bit, but better that than ordering your units and discovering you can't fit everything where you thought you could. Well, I'm afraid to say that that's fairly obvious indeed. I think obviously you're going to be checking on the plumbing and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know about this one. I, I think if you're trying to get a list of 50 design mistakes you're going to be like gra grasping at straws 
uh, after a little while because, this, you know, this one's fairly obvious, but let's talk about it. You obviously want to make sure that if you're planning to move something, that it actually can be moved. And this would be something that your designer would help you walk you through or your plumber or your general contractor would talk about. And, you know, you, you wouldn't just go order your kitchen and be like, oh, no, the sink's going to go over there. And, you know, like that's not going to work and you wouldn't even approach it that way. So yeah, make sure your plumbing is going to fit. I would say it, instead of, you know, neglecting the plumbing, make sure that the, that it's plumbed in such a way that you can utilize the rest of the space underneath that sink cabinet and make sure that it's planned out that, you know, I mean, you have enough room for pullouts, you have enough room to store things and that your plumbing is just not going every which way. And, and sometimes a little thought about that beforehand is actually pretty good. Um, just to, to save a little bit of space underneath that. And that's where I guess a professional plumber can come in to play. So, and all right, let's talk about, let's go to the comments for a few minutes and we'll just uh, say hi to some people here. Alan says, uh, Mark, everything is somewhat on schedule. Ordered our quartz. Nice. Della Terra Maxim. Maxim. Is that Caesar stone? Cambria? What is that? So, style stone? Awesome. That's exciting. You got the quartz ordered. It's like the end is in sight. And that's always good. Can't wait to see it all finished. And uh, all right. Hey, Melissa, we have a small home, live on a busy road. It is very dry and dusty. Anything on a shelf gets dusty within hours, but my dishes in my cabinet stay clean. Yep, they do stay clean in a cabinet. And that's the big thing some people don't think about before they go ahead and get that open shelf. I live on a... Well, I just... I, I mean, you're going to get dust anywhere you live, no matter what, where you live. But, um, but I think it's, uh, it's important to, at least, you know, like that's going to be one of the ramifications. Garden in Eden. Hey, hello from cold Denver, probably colder than we're when, than here today. Uh, it's nine degrees Celsius and which is, uh, you know, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. So I'm in Canada. It's above 32. Uh, Jack says problems with Ikea plumbing, European measurements. Do you mean with the uh, cabinets, Jack? Is that what you're talking about? Because it's in millimeters or the, the cabinets? Um, just uh, Ikea's sizes, if you're buying them in North America, they're, they're pretty standard. I don't see that how it would be an issue uh, for plumbing. Um, there's, there, I, I've never run into an issue with Ikea with plumbing. Um, if that's what you're asking. So, Hey Rob, love your latest video. Cool seeing you doing what you do. Enjoy watching the process. Yeah. We had a great time. Tara and I from living on a dime. Um, if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. It's, um, it's a great, uh, well, I mean, I'm saying it, but it's my video, but I think it's a great video, uh, of uh, how we went through Tara's kitchen and redesigned it. So check that out. It's, it's, uh, on, on the channel. And it's a nice before and after process to see, um, you know, taking what her kitchen looked like and what it's going to look like and the thought behind it all and her needs and what she wanted and, and how we address those things. So really cool. Jack's saying the sink cabinet. No, I don't think there's no issue. Uh, Ikea makes standard size cabinets um, as anyone would, 36s, 30s, uh, 24s, and the heights are all the same. So there's no issue with, with measurements for plumbing. Um, not that I've ever encountered. Aaron saying my flooring goes in tomorrow and my quartz countertops, MSI brand, MSI brand. Yes, they are a Breton Stone technology user. So we're, we're safe there. Go in next week. Just want, waiting to schedule backsplash at this point. Oh, so close to the finish line. That is awesome, Aaron. It's nice to be close to the finish line. And once you get that countertop ordered and you, you can see the end in sight, it's, it's really exciting. Really cool. All right, Patty's saying, if I can get there, what happened to my mouse? There we go. Ooh. All right. Moving my or oh, moving water lines and such, but it can become good at more and more to add and gas and electric lines. Um, yeah. If yeah, exactly. If if you have to like you can't just move plumbing over there. It's that that's not how it works. It uh, there's a lot involved in that. <laughs> Unless you're just gonna have like a pipe running through the back of your cabinets, which I've seen on occasion going to do a renovation and they have the sink way over here and inside the cabinets there's it's just like this slope of abs pipe going to the drain which is three cabinets over and it looks horrible um 
All right, Jim's saying, hey, Jim, thanks for coming on. Um, how much space do I need for a pantry? No room for a pantry cabinet larger than 21. Uh, 21's fine. 18 would be the smallest I like to go with because an eight because the the pullouts in an 18 are, you know, still pretty usable. But but 21 is great. 85 in height's fine because cabinet would be uh, standard 84. So that's fine. Uh, if that's your ceiling height, make sure you can stand it up because something that's 84 inches tall, you have to make sure you can actually stand it up because on the diagonal, um, just watch for that. But 21 is perfect size for a pantry. Nice single door, wide single door pantry. Beautiful. Lots of questions. We're going to get back to our thing in a minute here. We'll go through some questions. This is fun. Uh, question is, do wood floors have to match kitchen cabinets? No. I like oak laminate cabinets and want a dark engineered floor throughout will they clash to me they do well they don't have to match because i'd, I'd it'd be pretty hard to find flooring and cabinetry that matched perfectly and that might look a little bit too much uh aaron you're on here you know a thing or two what do you think um or anyone else really like i don't i mean without looking at what they look like it's hard to say and, and every case is different and what it looks like in 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 the house but here's the thing um if you if you don't think it looks great, you, you, you're probably not going to you know be happy with it. So I would say that's the first like sign to say maybe this isn't the way to go. But no, you, they don't have to match. You can have totally different color wood woods, I think, and that's totally fine. So, but someone else can chime in on that and and help us out. Maybe there's a better answer than what I'm giving. So because you know I'm not an interior designer, but I am learning from my interior designer handbook and I haven't got through the whole thing yet, but I'm starting to learn a little more about interior design so I can create content that is, uh, you know, has to do with that because this is kind of the, the realm that I'm in. Aaron is saying we had old cabinets pre, uh, pre remodel and have dark gray floors. They look good together, but I think yeah, it's, yeah, it's about what makes you ha happy. So, um, yeah, it's exactly if you, if you're already not happy with it, and it's not even installed, then maybe um, it's not the way to go. And in fact, if, and I think there might be a comment on there, uh, contrast, Aaron saying, thanks Aaron for, for ch ch uh, chiming in with that. I think light, dark adds depth to dimension. Yeah. So uh, what I'm thinking is if that the, if the, they're too close, um, that wouldn't look great either. So you do want some contrast, but again, all comes down to what you like, because it's your kitchen. You got to love it. So all right, I missed a few, but if I miss you on this, my apologies. We'll we'll, we'll do our best to get everybody. Um, hey, Jeff, I'm from Kentucky. Cool. Uh, do you use any software when you design your kitchens? I do. I use a program called Pro Kitchen. It's a uh, professional software. You pay a pretty penny for it on a yearly basis for a license, and there there's two major ones in the industry. There's probably more than that, but there's there's one called 2020 Design, which is probably the the gold standard um, for a kitchen design software. I use that I use that one for 20 years. Um, when I started doing this online, and when I, you know, this is my my online job here doing this, I switched over because it only works with a Windows computer, and I don't have a Windows computer, so I had to get something that I could get up and get running fast and. And it, it worked out great. It's web based. Um, their customer service is great. So I don't know if you're in the if you're looking to, to to get into kitchen design, but they're they're a pretty good one. So 2020 Design or Pro Kitchen are are the ones I'd go with. But I use Pro Kitchen for all my uh, clients. All right. Rosa saying we are doing maple slab stained light cherry with natural oak floors. So there's several steps of difference. That sounds nice. Maple slab, maple slab cab stained light cherry with natural oak floors. Sounds like a song lyric. I don't know. Sounds good. All right, let's go back over to. I'll come back to your, your all the comments in a minute, and I haven't forgotten about Barbara's undermount sink. But um, let's go back to what we were looking at here, and we'll uh, we'll keep going. Maybe more things will come up. All right, getting the worktop height wrong. Again, this is something that is not going to be that big an issue if you're working with, you know, either a designer or you're working with, um, if you're buying cabinets that are stock, 
no, like they're all standard sizes. So let's read this anyway. They're grasping at straws here, in my opinion, on this uh, article, but it's all good. Prepping food on worktops uh, that are the wrong height is a frustrating experience. Too low, you get a sore back from stooping too high and you won't be able to reach comfortably. Standard height uh, for worktops is around, okay, well, 36, uh, 36 inches, which is three feet. Um, but you can tailor this to your own needs within a range of 8,700 centimeters. So yes, you can. Um, if there's a vast height difference between members of your household, you should have space. You consider a dual level. Okay, so this is a really good point, And I have mentioned this before in other videos um, that if you need to have something higher or lower, that's fine. Go for that. There's no problem doing that. And if you're working with custom manufactured cabinets, uh, you should be able to do that no problem. It'll be a little bit different if you're using IKEA or if you're going with something that is an RTA where, where all the cabinets are standard. But you, there's still workarounds that you can, if you just use a little bit of, of thought to it, you can you can raise things on false, you know, boxes that, that you just clad on the bottom or you can hack the toe kick off it and, and lower it. Like there's, there's, there's some options out there. You can use shorter cabinets, you know, stack them. And if you just get creative, you can do it. But, you know, normally 36 inches is standard height and you don't want to, if, if usually you're not going to have, you know, the whole kitchen higher or lower, though I do have somebody who wants a, a kitchen completely raised, which is totally fine. But, you know, I guess that's a pretty good point. So, you know, maybe I'll be, you know, you're not going to get the worktop height wrong normally. They, the reason they do that height is it's, it, they just use the averages and the average amount of people, the average height, that's what they go with. So if, if the average amount of people, they'll, you know, that'll be, they'll be happy with that. They, you can't just make cabinets for every different height imaginable. It'd just be too much stock. It'd be too much work for them. It, it just wouldn't, they, they wouldn't be able to sell those units because you wouldn't know, but uh, yeah, get it right. I, I don't disagree. Oh, this is pretty. Is that a, oh, that's, is that a curtain? I don't even know what that is. All right. Forgetting the heating. Yeah, because you don't want to forget your heating because that's probably something you're going to forget in your next kitchen renovation. All right, sorry. Heating is another important detail that's easy to overlook in your kitchen design. Radiators are effective, but old-fashioned designs do take up valuable space. So you might want to consider a streamlined modern radiator. Maybe that's what that purple thing is. Okay. Uh, that takes up less square footage. Uh, other less intrusive alternatives include underflooring heating, inventing kickboard, uh, heating underneath these units. Yeah, there's lots of heating options for a kitchen. And I know the, the very popular thing, of course, in, in North America, at least, are heat pumps. Um, that, you know, that's that that heats, you know, the whole room. And yeah, you can get lots of in-flooring options that work really well, too. Um, so, so those are some options. But uh, overall, I've never had too many people ask me about what they're going to do for heating in their kitchen, to be honest with you. So but don't forget the heating if it's important. And uh, I guess it does come into play when you're talking about uh, under cabinet, like to have vents. I've done that numerous times in the past where we had to allow space for a, a vent, um, you know, in the Tokik space because they did have heaters. And so that had to be ducted um, in a particular way. So that kind of thing's important. I, th I think maybe the thing to think about is if you're doing a kitchen renovation and there's, there's, you know, radiators uh, on, on the floor and you have those, those grills on the floor uh, that you don't overlook the fact that they're there and forget about them. That can easily be done. And uh, you, we, we want to make sure that if you're covering them over and they're not dead, then you, you know, you have some way to access the heat that's coming out of them because you don't want it just blowing in your cabinet. That's not going to be good. So, all right. Let's go back here. Where are we at? Let's go to the comments for a minute. Hey, Jim. Jim, you're from Annapolis, like in Nova Scotia, Annapolis. Do you have a favorite style of under cabinet lights? I don't have a favorite style, but I think I like the strip LEDs, but I, I'm, I'm not sure because I haven't had all, that's the only type I've had before. And the mistake I made in my kitchen now is I, I didn't put any under cabinet lighting in. Um, Anyway, that, that's on another video. But I want something that's hardwired. 
And I like the strip LEDs because they, they do provide a, a lot of light and having under cabinet lighting is really important. So um, I don't have a favorite, but I like the strips, uh, if that makes sense. But you can get, you know, there's all kinds of different ones you can get. Home Depot have lots of options. If you're in Annapolis, I don't know if there's a Kent around where you're at, but uh, they have lots of great options as well. And people like Ikea's lighting, but it gets really pricing with all the components and stuff like that. Um, so I've heard that complaint before, but uh, that's another option that's out there. All right. Apologies for being late. No problem. Joining from Barbados. That's cool. Um, really nice to have you on again. So, all right. Rose is saying we did strip LED in our old house, this time doing push on pucks underneath mounted on Velcro. That's an option. I, I had, uh, oh, okay, you're not in Nova Scotia. <laughs> okay, well, I, you never know. Cool, thanks for joining me. Um, we, the Velcro is a great idea, Rose. That's a great point because the sticky tape thing is gonna fall off, the Velcro is gonna be secure. Um, I assume they're battery operated, which with LEDs will last a long time. And you just pop them on, push them on when you want them. And I think that's good to go. So uh, that's a good, that's a good, very good option. All right, let's keep moving. So I we considered renting or half of in-floor heat vent was underneath the island cabinet and it was wrapped in foil to block. Oh, like the, you could see the foil. Wow. It wasn't classy, really? <laughs> That's the newest trend. New, new trends for 2023. Wrap those cabinets in foil. That's that's great. Hey, Kira, Mark, thought about Ikea under cabinet light. Not sure if you have to turn each strip on individually, though. I'm not sure either, to be honest with you, because I, I don't have them. Uh, I've never had the Ikea ones, but I just, I've heard complaints about them that they're you know, a little expensive and a lot of moving parts. Do you have to turn each one on? I think you probably do. They're all connected. So this, if any of you know, help me out. Let's let's find out. Rosa saying, yeah, for batteries. Okay, cool. Let's go. All right. Hi, Mark. Planned. Hi. Planned to install quartz down here in Phoenix. Cool. I recently came across some butcher block countertop videos on YouTube. Finishing and maintenance is critical, but much cheaper. Thoughts? Uh... Yeah, I have some thoughts. <laughs> I like butcher block. I like it on an on, on an island or maybe a separate, um, you know, lunch counter type, type of idea. I'm not a super fan of it for the whole kitchen, um, but that's maybe just me. There is a little bit of care. You do have to oil it uh, so that it's food safe and sanitary, and it can be sanded fairly easy. Um, it can get damaged kind of easily, but at the same time, it's very good on your knives and other things like that. You can cut right on it if you want to. Make sure, I guess, you know, I, I'm not sure if you're going with something that's lacquered or that's or something that's oiled. The things, you know, the ones that are oiled are food safe and you can, you know, use them as a, as a prep area. But I, I mean, I don't have any thoughts in terms of, of if it's bad or not. I have thoughts in terms of I don't like the look of it on the whole kitchen, but that's just me. And some of it looks beautiful and some of it just looks, you know, like, like the old butcher block. Um, I like the walnut stuff, the stuff that's, you know, a little wider plank, stuff like that. I don't know if that really helps you, but, but it's a good option. You know, they're all good options. Lots of good options out there. You just want to get the right one. And if it's down to pricing and it looks beautiful, then it might be definitely the way to go. Because quartz isn't everything in a bag of chips. Quartz has some issues as well. It's not the be all end all of countertops. And, you know, for the price that you're paying, you, you know, at least for me, for the price I'd be paying for a stone or fabricated stone, I want it to be all that in a bag of chips, you know? So you can take that and think about how you want to process that further. Um, but I don't want to get a countertop that I have to worry about. And that's my problem with going with quartz is, Am I going to have to worry about this $8,000 piece of stone that's in my kitchen that that can burn or I can break? Or laminates, like, go ahead. Break me. doesn't matter. All right, I have a 1949 cottage with a fireplace in the kitchen. 
Wow, that's cool. I like it. All right, we're going on to, oh, and I won't use it. Won't you? How can we incorporate a stove or a vent hood in a cool way? Put in a pizza oven in, in that thing. You'd have to use something over the, oh, you'd have to, you know, probably hang some kind of vent hood over the top of that. Fireplace in the kitchen. That's really neat. We tried getting Ikea lighting, but we were most, oh, they're most, most unavailable. Melissa, you tried to get something from Ikea and it was not available? <laughs> that can't be right. <laughs> we were trying to find somewhere else to do something similar. Home Depot has similar things that I think probably are a little bit better or like Lowe's or one of those types of, you know, big box retail stores, they all have those, th those things and they're, and they're good. The Ikea's are like specific to Ikea and all the other places carry specific brands that might, you might get a little more variety and ease of use. So, and anything in Ikea, uh, if Alan's on here still, he can tell you, you know, they're probably not going to have the stock. So, Oh, and here's a good point. Lots of light options on Amazon. Lots of good light options on Amazon. I guess you can't see it, you know, or try it, but there are lots of good options. And, you know, really a, a lot of people, in my experience at least, we, we order lots of stuff online um, that normally maybe a few years ago we would be less, you know, prone to do that. But through what we've been through in the last two years, more and more people are online and comfortable with purchasing online. And so that's a great option. Thanks, Rose. And, wrote, and she's doing Butcher Block on her island. Yeah, I like Butcher Block on an island. Um, not the main kitchen, but that's just me. <laughs> Love the Val Kilmer. I did, I did too. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next, uh, we ordered our IKEA like three different locations in the Southeast, Charlotte, Atlanta, and Orlando. That's the thing, right? So you had to, you know, that's just the way IKEA is right now. And hopefully within the next month, year, two years, it'll get better. It's just, you know, it's just the trickle down effect of what we've been through and hopefully that'll clear up. All right, let's go on to our next slide and we'll keep going. Thanks for being on everybody who's watching this live. Again, if you're just jumping on, we're going through the 50, well, we're going through the rest of the 50 kitchen design mistakes that are on loveproperty.com. I'll put the link to that article in the description below. It's a pretty cool article. It's obviously out of the UK uh, somewhere, but it's it's really good. And um, well, it's it's I shouldn't say that. OK, it's not that it's really good, but it's it brings up a lot of things that, that are good to think about. So um, I would say it's moderately good article. Scrimping on small appliances. Uh, you've invested in a beautiful new kitchen and everything looks spectacular until you plug in in the grotty plastic kettle. Grotty? I love these words. Last week, uh, what did we have last week? I forget. Uh, grotty plastic kettle. And um, you've had since uh, you've had since you were a student. Treat yourself to some new shiny new appliances to finish the job in style. There are plenty of affordable and attractive options out there to choose from. I guess, you know what? You got a brand new kitchen and you put that thing in there. No, come on, man. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. You got to get a new kettle. Get a new coffee maker. Get yourself a new toaster. You know, splurge a little bit and uh, it'll be good. Oh, it, it, so yeah, I got it thing on okay sorry left it on too long um thanks so much for the super chat i really appreciate that eisman um thanks mark i appreciate let me see if i can bring that up where'd it go well uh thanks mark i appreciate your opinion on quartz versus canada i'm design i'm design challenged yeah <laughs> i'm design challenged too i don't know if i'm gonna be much help but that's why i'm reading the uh, the interior design handbook so that I'll be a little more informed on your drapes and the color of your walls. But I really appreciate that super chat. Thank you so much. All right, where are we? Oh, here we are. There we go. I couldn't find it. Thank you. Um, here we go, Alan. Alan will tell you all the truth. Ikea is a bad dream come true. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to go to Ikea. It's four and a half hours away from where I live. So it, it's, it, it's, you know, kind of a trip for us. And, uh, but 
as soon as I can get there. Uh, I think I'm going in April is, is the soonest I can get there, but I'm going to, you know, film some content while I'm there. And um, I, I get like, I'm pretty excited to go to Ikea. I just think it's a cool store. I like walking through the displays and you can see, anyone can say anything you want about it, but it looks amazing when you're in there and you know, it's great for ideas. I like it. So hopefully I can shoot some content and make it, make it something that uh, is worth looking at. So, all right. Okay. We have some info on the Ikea lighting. I know Ikea lighting is hard wired with a remote that we used to dim and brighten on and off. We have the remote attached to the inside of one of the cabinets. Okay. Oh, I know. Okay. Ikea lighting is hard wired. So that's something to consider if you're buying Ikea lighting. Uh, it has to be hard wired. So it might be something that is more usable in a new renovation or new build and not... Um, a retrofit, maybe. All right, Anna. Hey, Anna. Hi, Mark. What are your thoughts on soapstone counters for durability? I need easy maintenance, clean and durable. I've never had soapstone, and I did. I have never had a lot of experience selling soapstone because of where I live, maybe, and it just wasn't something that was marketed very well or pushed out to consumers. So, not a lot of experience personally with soapstone. But what, from what I gather, it's a beautiful uh, countertop choice. Now, I know that Jeff from Homestead Studios just did a whole series of videos on countertops and soapstone was one of the ones that he um, talks about. So I would say I would check out that video because uh, Jeff's really good, um, it, lots of information, and that would be a good place to go to, to check that out. But from what, what, what I've seen, what I've experienced, soapstone is, is great. But I, I can't give you a whole lot more off the top of my head without doing a little bit of research. But I do recommend you checking out Jeff's video on quartz because um, it's it's good. And it'll probably answer your question better than what I'm going to do right here. Um, so sorry, I can't help you more. Pokey, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. It was Pokey. Yeah. So <laughs> no, Pokey was last week's word. You don't want to make your kitchen look pokey with these gr grotty plastic kettles. So. Thank you. All right. Put your electric outlets up near upper cabinets. Yeah, if you guys, I mean, you probably have. It was it was somebody who um, put me onto those ones that go up underneath the cabinets, like as a strip. And those are pretty cool. Those are pretty cool. Alan, you're saying you need to pick up the white. Okay. Thank you, Alan. You don't want to leave her waiting. Let Ikea leave you waiting. You just, you go get your wife. Thanks so much for being on. I appreciate it. Appreciate everybody being on here. If you're just jumping on, we're looking at uh, the rest of the 50 kitchen design mistakes. And we're going through lots of comments and chatting. And Barbara, I haven't forgotten uh, about your undermount sink. I'm going to look for that in a minute. Let's jump back over to our uh, list. Oh, here's a great question before we do that. Uh, and thanks for being on. Um, hello, Mark. Where is your favorite place to have paper towels? Ooh, on counter, under cabinet, in a door. You know, that's in my kitchen, that's the one thing I didn't do anything about. They just sit on the countertop. I don't even have one of those cool things from HomeSense that you, you, you put them on that have the weight at bottom. They're just sitting on the countertop. You know, that's what it is. But my favorite, oh, sorry. But my favorite, I think there's lots of innovative things out there. Uh, and it depends on where you think you're going to use it the best. You know, I don't like the look of it hanging underneath a, a, a cabinet like the old school days with the plastic things that you, you pop in there. But if that's your thing, then that's your thing and it works. It's right there. It's easy. On the countertop is my preferred thing because it's, again, it's, we use it quite a bit, unfortunately, paper towel. So I, that always works. And whether you want to have it one of those, you know, post things like uh, you can get, that's great. And I've seen a lot of things inside drawers recently. I've been looking on Pinterest. I've been on Pinterest a lot this week because my next video is a reaction video to stuff on Pinterest, in particular, corner cabinet solutions. So that's coming up Saturday. But in the midst of looking at all those things, there's lots of really cool ideas for inside of drawers uh, that you can, you know, put your, your, your paper towel. And I've even seen things that they're inset inside the front, you know, the face of a drawer. So you have like cabinet, drawer fronts, open space with paper towel, more drawers, more doors, whatever. Um, so that's kind of a look 
you know, if, if you, if you want it right there, it's like right in the face of the cabinets. Not sure if, uh, if that helps, but, but Jeff's saying paper towel is where you need them. And that's, that's kind of, I just have it on counter. So, but that's a great, that's a really good question. Um, that doesn't get answered probably enough when we're, when we're doing kitchen design. Uh, I never really consider counter top or uh, paper towel, to be honest with you. A lot of people making some comments on the, <clears throat> the paper towel. Love it. Okay. Let's, let me jump over to our slides for a minute and let's see what we can. All right. There's the grotty looking kettle. All right. So not including enough PowerPoints. Look at that tile. Maybe that's a tile for me in my new, in my kitchen. What do you think? Huh? Huh? All right. Not only will you need uh, plug for sockets for every appliances, such as your toasters and your kettles, not your, your grotty ones, but you'll also need some extra sockets for lesser used items, such as blenders. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, for non kitchen based gadgets, such as a smartphone and tablet chargers, USB power sockets, uh, make useful additions at the end of a wall unit. I agree. At, uh, I agree. You should have some of those USB outlets in your cabinet somewhere and um, <laughs> put in your, your PowerPoints. Uh, that's funny. So yeah, you want to have enough, you got to make sure you have enough power, enough outlets. When we were doing redoing our kitchen, we, we put in a lot of outlets, uh, more than we needed and, you know, make sure that they're ground fault receptacles so that, you know, they'll flip the, they'll flip off. So you don't get electrocuted if ever that was to happen. Um, but having those USB chargers is really, really handy. So, so think about that as you're doing some electrical work or you're, you're dealing with your electrician say, Hey, I want a little mix of USB. And normally the electrician be like, should say, ask you that, but you never know. Let's go to the next one. Forgetting the finishing touches. You didn't forget anything there in that kitchen. Wow. You think that's staged? I don't know. Looks cool. A lot of uh, a lot of green there. Michael, you will love this one. You've planned your workspace, nailed your traffic flow, and incorporated all the storage you need. That's great. But don't forget the final flourishes that will transform your kitchen from purely practical into a living space that you uh, love spending time in. Artwork can accessorize. Uh, and sorry, artwork and accessories are the easy way to inject color and personality as our patterned tiles upholstery. If your kitchen includes a sitting area, we love the inclusion of oil paintings in this characterful, characterful, characterful scheme. <laughs> That's a tough thing to say. Characterful. Uh, yeah, lots of cool oil paintings in there. I have like couple, you know, I have the painting of my llama, or it's not my llama, but a painting of a llama um, in my kitchen. And, uh, you know, there it is there. That's not my kitchen, but there's that kitchen there. So um, yeah, add a little bit of, add a little bit of artwork. Nothing wrong with that. I don't know if it's a mistake. This isn't a kitchen design mistake. All right. So we're, we're kind of getting off the topic here. Uh, love property. This is not a kitchen design mistake, but yeah, consider having some, some, uh, some pictures. That's all good. All right, let's go to the next one. Then I'll jump back to the comments. All right, wasting worktop space. Okay. <clears throat> That's an interesting, interesting looking spot there. Looks good. All right, cool. A generous amount of work space is a must in a busy kitchen. Yes. Anything less than a meter or 36 inches, okay, uh, of countertop. And you'll be struggling for space. Ideally, uh, you need at least 45 centimeters. Uh, so I don't know what that is in. I don't know what that is in inches uh, on either side of your sink and plenty of elbow room around your hob or your your oven, your cooktop. Rather take notes from this Ikea kitchen and clear the clutter with shrewdly placed wall hooks and shelving and choose integrated microwave as possible, if possible. Um, yeah, you know, I'm not a fan of wall hooks, to be honest with you. I think I don't, I don't like the, the I don't like things hanging. Um, but you do need a certain amount of 
of counter space. Now, here's the thing. In most situations, in most kitchens, unless you're designing and you're, you're, you're subject to a really small kitchen footprint, you're probably not going to have this issue. You're, you're probably, the issue is going to be where it's located and how you're using it, not if you're going to have it or not. But if you're in the situation that you, you, you know, you just don't have the kind of room, then that's where these island, you know, carts come in or these uh, tables that you can pull out and, and, you know, leaf, drop leaf type of things. And to get as much storage space, that's why they're using hooks so you can get stuff off the countertop and put it on the walls um, so that you, you don't have to worry about it. But yeah, you want to have enough counter space. So I think that's a given, um, but not everybody has the, the luxury of having, you know, oodles and oodles of counter space. So sometimes you have to get innovative, innovative. So that's a good one. I like it. All right, let's jump over to, and if I miss your comments, my apologies. Again, um, we're doing the best we can. All right. Alex, thanks for being here. Hi, Mark. New here. Cool. Thanks for coming on. And almost missed the first live video. I have two questions. Do you recommend garbage disposal? That's a good question. Uh, and would and what should go first, new flooring or base cabinets? Very Two great questions. I would recommend... <clears throat> Uh, disposals if you're on a sewer if you're on a septic system in a rural area maybe not I, I don't know you'd have to definitely check with the municipality or you know to make sure that your uh, septic tank and your field can handle whatever is going to be going in the disposal and if it's set up for that uh, but I like the idea of a disposal I mentioned I think last week what that it's not something that's very popular where I live, but whenever we travel to the south, we go to different places on vacation, and I'd see a lot of the disposal units. I thought they were really great. And you know, um, the place I used to work at, we used to sell them as well, but we didn't sell a lot of them uh, because, again, it's just not something that was popular in our area. But yeah, I'm I'm not opposed to a garbage disposal unit um, like a garburator. And should the flooring go down first or the base cabinets? How much trouble do I want to get in here, Alex? <laughs> How much trouble? Well, you should lay your flooring. Depend. Okay. Let me tell you what I did. I have hardwood flooring in my kitchen. I'm not going to waste hardwood flooring underneath my cabinets. So I built it up three quarters of an inch with cheaper plywood. So, and I ran it in underneath. So the toe kick covered that space. So that's what I recommend doing. Now, underneath my island, I just, no problem. I ran it underneath there. It's, it is what it is. I didn't care about that. But some, you know, because my island, it, it could move, though it doesn't. It's in place. But, I, so I didn't bother with, with that part of it. But underneath the L shape of my kitchen, I put everything up to that flooring level. Now, that being said, a lot of people lay it right underneath. and It's no big deal. It depends on who you ask, what they're going to tell you is right or wrong. I would say the best thing to do is to build it up to the level of your flooring and just run it to underneath the toe kicks. Um, that's my best advice. And I think that's what works the best in case there is something that has to happen that that flooring has to come out of there. It's not underneath your cabinets, obviously. So, I mean, that's the reason why. Great questions. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's keep going. Um, yeah. You know what? I have, uh, have you seen the video from the 1949 kitchen? A few people, in fact, Tara, who was on the, my video uh, on Saturday, where, where I redid her kitchen, uh, she's the first one who sent it to me. Someone else uh, had pre has also, after that story, has sent me that video. And, um, I'm, you know, I mean, Tara is saying it'd be a great idea if, if I, you know, talked about that video, reacted to it or critiqued it or talked about what's current, what's not current. And I think I will do that because it's I, I watched it. And it's, um, it's interesting, uh, you know, it's really interesting looking back and just seeing culture in, in that, you know, a little scary too, but yeah, I have seen it really neat. And I might, I might, I might do a video on that coming up in the future. All right. Oh, here's, okay. So Rose is saying floating floors should go to the edge. Tiles should go to the walls. Yeah, I, I agree. That's fine. Because, um, if your tile has to come up, you're going to be breaking it up anyway because it's, you know, it's mortared down. So um, probably not a big deal. So that's that's a good point, Rose. 
but floating floor, even though I've laid it underneath because the cabinets aren't, you know, screwed to the floor, they're floating on top of it as well. Not that big a deal, I don't think, but generally it's not the best practice. You should put it up to the toe kick, but overall, even if you're doing tile, um, you know, build up, you can still build up underneath, but that's, that's, uh, that's good input, Rose. Thank you. All right. Lori. Hi, Lori. If you have an irregular shaped kitchen footprint, a long wall of 16 or so feet, the rest are much shorter. Should you start your design with the long wall and work your way around or start with the shortest wall? You should start your design with your sink and, and if where that sink location is going to be and then, and then kind of work from there. Now, if it's open and it can go anywhere, then start on the long wall and, and kind of map that out first. That's probably what I would do. Or I would, I mean, there's a few different approaches. Like when I design a kitchen, like I'm a little scatterbrained. So I, I go from task to task and back to this one and to this new one and back. And, you know, that's just the way I'm, I'm wired. So when I design a kitchen, you know, I don't, I don't start here and do this, do this, do this, do this. Like I'll do a corner, I'll do a sink. I'll come back over here. I'll, I'll go to that corner. But I would say the best approach is where is your sink going to be located? If you know that, work out from that, figure that part out, figure out where your appliances are going to be best. And don't look at it in terms of which maybe wall I should start with, but figure out okay, where, where are the appliances going to go? Are there windows on this wall? Are there doorways? Are there other obstacles in the way? Is it just a blank slate of 16 feet, which is, you know, with lots of space for cabinetry? Um, and how short are those return walls? If they're maybe they're too short to even return. Maybe it's just a one wall kitchen that might be the best solution. So there's there's lots of ways of approaching it, but I would approach it that way of of thinking about your sink and and working out from there and, and seeing how it goes. So if, I hope that makes sense. And I don't know if there's a, a wrong way, to be honest with you. I, I think as you design it, you'll come up with the best solution. So, well, at least that's what happens to me because you know, as I, design, as I design a kitchen, you know, because I'm doing it there on a, on a computer screen, I can easily, you know, flip around where something's going to go and, and, and work, work at it that way. So, all right. Hey, Tina, thanks for being on. I personally don't want to waste flooring. No, that's right. I also don't want to pull the flooring out from under cabinet. So that's, that's exactly why, uh, Alex, we don't want to be wasting that flooring. And, and, uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty sound advice. Okay. A couple more and then we'll jump back around here to the uh to the article i have no idea if we're getting close to being finished on that article but we'll get there we're going to finish it tonight uh in the next few minutes um some cabinet this is a very good point uh some cabinet companies won't honor warranty if the cabinets are on finished floors not subfloors really good that's a good thing thank you for bringing that up um yeah i want to check out if they're going to cover it for warranty Though I've never gone after a flooring company for warranty before. Interesting. The flooring should be under the dishwasher, right? Yes, it definitely should be, or at least built up under the dishwasher. So if you have cabinets like Ikea's that are on legs or many other versions that are on adjustable legs, and those are sitting on your floor, like your subfloor, make sure you build up underneath your your appliances, especially your dishwasher, because that has to be the height of your cabinet. So your countertop will, will sit on it properly and that those things can pull out if they need to without having a lip of flooring that's boxing them in. So whether or not you put flooring under there, which would be fine, or you build up just that section, that would be fine too. And so for our case, we just build up the whole thing so we wouldn't have to worry about it. But yeah, definitely. Any recommendations on... Painting old kitchen cabinets. No. <laughs> Don't do it. Just get new cabinets. Um, yeah, I have some recommendations. Honestly, I would say get it professionally done. Have it sprayed. Have it done uh, by someone who, who's done it before. That's my best recommendation. Now, you're saying I'm not going to do that. I want to do it myself. Then make sure you, um, you know what you're getting into. I would say that those things need to be sanded down completely. Um, you don't just don't just TSP them, um, or you know, make sure you got to get all that old paint off of there, and uh, they have to be you know primed and ready to go. Don't just paint over them. I would I prepare them first, bring them back to to um, you know to the to the wood, and then repaint them. Um, that's probably the the best recommendation. And there's 
it, I mean, there's lots of videos. In fact, Jeff again has a video on this where he paints cabinets and he does it with a particular roller. Uh, he's he, uh, Homestead Studios. Maybe I'll link to some of those videos of his in the description because um, they're they're good. He actually does it on the video where he paints the cabinets. Um, so he's a good source to to do that. But my real advice is don't paint cabinets. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kind of IKEA cabs can sit on top of phone because they have legs. Yeah, we mentioned that. So that's right. Um, you know, but your appliances you want to think about. So cool, cool, cool. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Um, can we, can a dishwasher replace the end of an island run? Yep. As long as you have a panel on the side to cover it up, no problem. You can definitely have um, that there. And uh, Rose is chiming in, hire a pro to paint them. Hire a pro to spray them. And that's the best thing. Definitely have a pro to do it. That'll be your best finish and the best outcome for you. They can take those doors right off, have them sprayed, do everything else in, inside the home, and away you go. And they have to be smooth as glass, she's saying. Um, so, right, make sure they're, they're properly prepared. All right, let's jump over to our article again here. Great chat, everybody. This is uh, really fun. All right. Opting for impractical finishes. Yeah, okay. That's going to be hard to clean, that, that thing there. All right. Intricate kitchen tile design and 3D dimensional wall service may look fabulous in the showroom, but they're not always the most practical choice. Food spills, grease, dust can soon mount up in the kitchen and cleaning around uh, faceted tiling is time consuming and fiddly for preparation in cooking areas. Look for durable materials that are easy to wipe down. I wholeheartedly agree. You do not want to have like, think about this and getting the spaghetti sauce off of that thing. That'd be horrible. So, okay. I think it goes without saying that you want to have something that's easy to wipe down. So don't get uh, hoodwinked into uh, some of these fancy options that are out there. Unless you don't care. Assuming you need a new layout. I like that color green. What do you guys think of that one? It's tempting to change your layout when purchasing a new kitchen. Yes, it is. But if your kitchen work triangle works for you, then you can save yourself a lot of money by keeping the plumbing and electrical systems uh, in the existing places. New cabinetry worktops and tiles can create a very different look without unnecessary labor expense. Uh, a tweak to the layout, such as integrated appliances, may be all that is needed. And that is the last one, number 50. So, you might not need a new layout. That's fine. Um, but you can definitely probably tweak your layout. Most times, you will find that if you are endeavoring to do a kitchen design or a new kitchen, it's because it's not laid out very functionally or... Maybe it was functional for someone else. Again, last uh, video with Tara, her kitchen was a custom kitchen that was designed for somebody else who lived there. They bought the house. It doesn't work for them and their family. That doesn't mean it wasn't a practical, functional kitchen for somebody. It just might not be for you. And so having that redesign made sense. However, if your current kitchen is laid out properly, uh, it, you might not need to do anything to that kitchen in other than, you know, paint it or get new doors or clad it with some other kind of finish or maybe new countertops or backsplash because it is already, you know, optimal. And that's the key. Uh, just because, you know, you can do it doesn't mean you should. So <clears throat> 1980s Aquaman. Kind of cool. I'm not a fan of green cabinets, but that one, I, I, I could go for that in a picture, not in my own house. All right. Well, that was the end of our 50 kitchen design mistakes, but I have to go searching for uh, Barbara's countertop uh, with undermount sink in laminate. So while I do that, we'll keep chatting and I can multitask uh, as we go here and hopefully don't mess this up too much. So let's move that over there. And, um, let me know what you thought about 
some of these, or, or maybe you have other suggestions that were mistakes in, uh, in your kitchen that you, uh, you encountered or don't want to encounter. And let's see. All right, Barbara, we got them. We got them. This is really neat. Okay. Let me see if I can. All right, everyone hold, hold tight. We're, we're going to stop sharing that one now. Here we go. All right, here we go. Can you see that all right? Let's look at that. Can we zoom in on that maybe? All right. So this is a laminate countertop with an undermount sink. Um, no reveal, just zero reveal uh, sink. And I guess that's why that would work because it is zero reveal. I would love to know how they finish the edge of that sink. It looks pretty neat. Um, so, so there you go. Let me know what you think of that. That's a, a laminate sink with an undermount uh, or a laminate countertop with an undermount sink. Zero, zero um, edge on it there. Zero reveal. And it looks, it looks pretty cool. I don't know how it's done though. So Barbara, you're going to have to let us know. How did that work? How did we do this? Really cool. All right. All right. Lots of comments coming in. So everyone, th that's that's um, that's what we that's what we have to look at. We have to look at all those design mistakes. What I'm going to do, I'm going to craft a video of uh, you know actual design mistakes, not 50 of them, but uh, ones that we can actually look at and say we want to definitely avoid these, not to make these, or you know, how we can not go about making those mistakes in the kitchen design are the things that I come across, particularly uh, when I'm doing design work for clients or that I see in the industry a lot, things that maybe could be done a different way or a better way. Uh, so that'll be coming up in the near future. And hopefully that'll be something that you'd want to watch. Um, all right. I'm confused about an undermount sink in laminate. Wouldn't the counter be soaked really fast? Well, I would be of the same opinion Rose, and I don't know. Um, I don't know how this was done. So we're going to, I'm going to try to find out though, because it looks, it looks nice. Um, it, it looks, where'd it go? Oh, I stopped sharing it. Let me bring it up again. It definitely looks nice. Here we go. There we go. I mean, I'm confused too. I don't know how that works. I I, I think that, uh, you know, I'll have to find out. Here we go. Barbara's chiming in. Thank you, Barbara. You need a specific sink and a good fabricator. Okay. And I, I would say, yeah, there's probably a very specific sink that those, that goes with. And I would love to, to chat with that fabricator to find out how this process works so that you don't get any water on the substrate underneath because as soon as water gets on that, it's going to be the end of the story. But this looks uh, like it's finished, you know, pretty seamlessly. So, uh, Barbara, obviously you have had success with this and uh, you don't have any problem with it. So let us uh, let me know. It is very interesting. Um, and I love it. I love this community that can we can see some of these things. So thank you, Barbara, for sharing that and letting me put that up there for people to see. Um, it looks really, really interesting. All right. Thumbs up, friends. See you on Saturday. Yes. Super excited with Pinterest reactions. I hope the Pinterest reactions. Thank you uh, for joining tonight. I really appreciate it. I hope the Pinterest reaction video will be, will be good. I have never done one like it before. So it'll be interesting. It's about corner cabinets. So I'm trying my best. Um, all right, Shirley put something around the lamp to keep it getting wet. Yeah, there's something in there that's keeping that thing from from uh, from getting wet. It's a mistake to put molding atop cabinets when the ceiling slopes about two inches from one side of the room to the other. One side will have a nine foot ceiling above. And um, thanks, Jeff, for coming on. See ya. Um, thanks for coming on. Uh, and the other side will mold with six inches. Whew. 
That's a good question. Um, nine foot ceiling, you have nine inches to six inches. Depends on the length of that space. And, you know, uh, you know, is it 12 feet? Is it 10 feet? Is it nine? Is it eight? What, whatever that is. Um, I would say the longer it is, the less you're going to notice that. And the shorter it is, the more you're going to notice it. I, I, I'd be careful with that. I don't know if it's, you know, I don't know if it's a mistake per se, but it might not look the nicest if it's a shorter distance. It, spread out enough might be okay. I've seen it where it was um, less than nine inches. And, you know, I mean, it, it happens fairly often. I mean, ceilings or floors or anything, walls are, are not level plumber square. So this could be something that, um, you know, many people encounter, but um, I would say the, the best solution is, is if it's over a long span, probably not as big a deal than if it's over a shorter span. All right. Uh, wrote, uh, Barbie saying, I saw the laminate undermounted a home show. I had to try it. Okay. What's the brand? What's the brand of that sink? And is, I, I mean, laminate's laminate, so I can't see it being anything to do with the laminate, so. Okay, to the same 100 year old house, yeah. Uh, no, that's fine, I think the same thing. As long as it's over a span, we're good. All right, Gammy saying hit the like button. Yeah, hit the like button, thanks, Gammy. Um, thanks, mom. All right. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. Uh, some New England, some of the historic. Okay, sorry, not 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 a comment. All right, so there you have it. Um, and and Lori saying, I thought maybe it was an it was arborite on the counter. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. It's definitely what's called. It looks like post form countertop, and with a hole cut in it, with this mounted into it. So pretty cool. All right, everybody, this has been a blast. Thanks so much for being on for this Wednesday night. If you've watched the, through the replay, um, hopefully you went through the chapters in the video description below that you can go through these points. And thank you to all of you who are coming on live tonight and we're just chatting and putting in comments. It's really fun. It's uh, We have some great, great questions and great conversation, and I appreciate everyone who comes on. This Saturday, we will have um, my Pinterest reaction video, which hopefully will turn out to be half decent. That's the plan, at least. And uh, we'll go from there. But uh, again, so to all of you who are watching, have a great and marvelous week. Don't make any of these kitchen design mistakes. Uh, you know, at least uh, call a friend or call me. I'm your friend. We can, we can, uh, you know, we can chat about it. Uh, I love chatting about kitchens. Next week we'll be on again, same time, uh, same place to talk about whatever it is we're going to talk about. But it'll be kitchen related uh, to to some degree. And uh, again. Uh, bring your questions, bring your comments, and uh, we'll see you in the chat next week. And uh, everyone have a great week. Appreciate it. Bless you all. Bye-bye. Better hit end. <laughs> Just letting it roll. <laughs>